Good morning, and welcome to All Souls Catholic Church for this celebration. We also welcome the, all those who join us live streaming. Our digital worship aids is in the church website opening page within the Watch Mass link. If you are having difficulty accessing the worship aid, please contact the church office for further instructions. Thank you for your very generous donations to All Souls Catholic Church during these unprecedented times. Please use the box, metal boxes at the doors to drop off your offering. Our offertory program called All Souls We Share is convenient online giving used by our parishioners. Please contact the parish office at 407-322-3795 for any questions. Thank you for your support as All Souls reopens. We currently have a need for ushers at the weekend masses. Please contact the parish office at 407-322-3795. We ask you to prayerfully consider giving to All Souls Catholic School Annual Fund. Please visit All Souls We Share on our webpage to donate or call the school office at 407-322-7090. As we begin distributing communion, we ask you to please be seated. Please do not kneel. The Eucharistic ministers will bring communion to you in the pews. As the Eucharistic minister reaches your pew, please stand, remove your mask, and cup your hands to receive communion. Once the Eucharistic minister has passed, you may kneel if you wish. Please note, we will only be serving communion in your hand. If you wish to receive a blessing, remain seated, cross your arms over your chest, and the minister will say a blessing without touching. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Our mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ismael Soto. Our celebrant is Father Ken Metz. Our entrance song is Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. Let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Before he gave his body and blood on the cross for the salvation of the entire world, 
Jesus gave his body and his blood to his disciples in the form of bread and wine. He instructed them to continue this practice in memory of him. Like the Lord provided food and drink in the desert, water and manna, as you recall, he provides food and drink to sustain us. And he takes it one step further. It's just not food that just happens to be there. It's his own body and his blood. As we receive Eucharist today, let's be sure that we realize the sustenance of what we are given. And may that Eucharist today share, that we share together, strengthen us and enliven us as we bring Jesus to the world. So my brothers and sisters, as we begin, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal high priest pleading for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your body and blood give us life and sustain us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way to peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us today, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. He who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to you, to your fathers. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood to drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things I heard during the quarantine was that parishioners missed receiving Jesus in Holy Communion at Mass. I can't tell you how many people said that. And perhaps the old saying is right on the mark. Absence makes the heart fonder. Right? When you've gone from something, you maybe say, this is what I'm missing. But there are many ways we can be quarantined. You think about it. You could live in a country where mass is not permitted. And I, I've shared many stories like that with you before countries that I visited years ago where Mass was not allowed to be celebrated and yet we sort of snuck in and celebrated Mass and people would walk for miles and miles and miles just to come to celebrate Eucharist. Or we could live in a country where you're persecuted. And I remember the stories that were told about the Vietnamese bishop who for years and years was confined to a jail. He finally got some kindly disposed guards to smuggle in bread and wine. And these were the moments where he would pray and he would celebrate Mass at night and he'd share Eucharist with the other people that were imprisoned with him. Or we could live with a disease that keeps us from getting out, like many of you perhaps watching at home today. That's another kind of a quarantine, another kind of an absence. And how we dearly we miss Eucharist. Or we could live in an area with very few priests. In the Synod on the Amazon months ago, that was one of the big stories that came from there, that people never had a chance to go to Mass. Maybe once a year a priest might visit their, their little village. There's a lot of ways we can be quarantined. But one thing I learned in celebrating Mass in those countries or visiting people that are sick, how important the reception of communion is for them. They know what is missing in their life. And what they're missing is what we call the real presence. The real presence. In Catholic terminology, real presence means something different than what it means in many other Christian groups. They'll talk a lot about the real presence also, but their understanding of it is really different. Now, if you've been watching on the, the videos we've been making here from the parish, we're right in the middle of a whole series now on Corpus Christi and the body of Christ. We're just sort of moving our way through it. Another one was posted a couple days ago, one will come up this Friday, another one for next week. But we're trying to delve into this and, and explain this and try to get to it more clearly. But what I want to share to you today is to talk about how Jesus is present 
in every Eucharist. And what is so special about the presence of Jesus in the body and blood of Christ under the forms of bread and wine. It was back at the uh, Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, in the decree on liturgy that the, the bishops talked about the various ways that Christ is present at Mass. In the word of God, which we read, he's present in that. He's present in the body of Christ, all of us gathered together. He's present as he will be present in the Holy Eucharist after the consecration. They talked about all those ways. But they said the best way, the primordial way, was presence under the forms of bread and wine. But the other presence were all there. Pope Paul VI wrote an encyclical on that back in the 60s. Mysterium Fidei. And in that encyclical, he talked about all these different ways that he is really present. However, he said, that doesn't mean there's not one that's most important. And he, he really spelled that out. He said, the, in the, the real presence in the Eucharistic elements of bread and wine is the presence par excellence of Jesus, because it's substantial. And so to say he's really there, not just a sign, not just a symbol, but he's really there. And through it, Christ becomes present, whole and entire, body and blood, soul and divinity. But a way that I think really tied this together was something that came out, and we call it, the priests call it the germ. G-I-R-M, okay, not a virus or a germ like that. G-I-R-M, general instruction on the Roman Missal. And that's when we made all those changes years ago, back in the, in, in the late, what was that, about two, two, 206, going into the new translations and all of that. Uh, in there, they, they, they present this in a way that that's really important for us to grasp. First of all, they said Jesus is present in the assembly. Jesus is present amongst us. Why? Jesus said so. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. So he's here, just by us gathering together. Secondly, they said he is present in the priest who is presiding call it the presider. Google doesn't recognize that, nor does word. Presider is not a word, so I always have to keep correcting it. No, that's an okay word. It's the presider is as the leader of the assembly. He acts in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. And so that when the priest says the word, this is my body, this is my blood, that's what happens is his body and it is his blood. The third way they said that Jesus was present at the mass was in the word, in the scriptures. And today we had the word of God coming to us in John. We had it from the, the readings of the Old and the New Testament. That's God speaking to us, that, that God is present to us, that Jesus is present to us as these words are being uttered. And even as I said to you, you know, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink, that's just not me talking. It's the Lord talking to us. That's Jesus talking to us. And then fourthly, they said, he is present in the Eucharistic species, technical word for bread and wine. That's what that means, bread and wine. And they call this the preeminent presence of Christ. And what looks like bread and wine has truly become Christ's body and blood by taking blessing, breaking and sharing of the presider and the assembly gathered and by the word of God. It's all in it together. And the germ asks, was it not in the breaking of the bread that the disciples of Emmaus recognized Jesus present among them? That's our job, to open up our eyes and see Jesus present among us. 
And therefore, when we receive these sacred elements, when we receive the body and blood of Christ, we become more the body of Christ. St. Augustine reminded the church, this would be about what, 1,200 years ago, long time ago, he said, we become what we eat and drink. He wasn't talking about the essence. He wasn't talking about the chemicals and the bread and wine. He was talking about Jesus, that we become like Jesus. In other words, the germ says, we become Christ present. The cycle begins again. Christ present in the gathered assembly, in the presider, in the word of God proclaimed, and in the Eucharist broken and shared. Take away just one of these. And you have an impoverished Christianity. If there's no assembly, then Christianity becomes kind of a solitary me and God or me and Jesus or something. I can communicate with God out in the world on a Sunday morning. That's nice. It's nice to talk to God that way. But it doesn't make up for the assembly. And to be missing being part of the assembly, as they said in the early church, you are hurting, damaging the body of Christ. And if there's no priest, there's no presider, there's no power to have the real body and blood of Jesus. And if there's no word, there's no revelation from God. Oh, and I can remember how people at weddings sometimes who would drive me nuts, they want to have other readings instead of the scriptures. And I said, why? Oh, because we like them. Oh, how nice. It's not where it's at, folks. Jesus is present in the word. So you take away the word, impoverished, incomplete. And if there is no real presence, all you have left are symbols without power. Symbols without power. It would be like a stop light out here on 46 and Rand Road. What power does that stop light have? Zilch. That stop light doesn't do a thing. It's only if we react to it that there's a thing. And that's the difference. It's not that I have to see that Jesus is really here. It goes the other way. He is really here. And I have to recognize that. So you take away any one of these four ways that Jesus is present in the Mass, and you're incomplete. Jesus says in the Gospel today that he's given life to us. You will live forever. My flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. I could read the whole thing again for you right here. But you get the message. He gave his life to us in Eucharist. We then become like him. We, the body of Christ, moving in the world today. And that's really what the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ is all about. That we recognize who Jesus is, who Jesus is, who gives himself to you and me, that we're privileged enough to receive him in our hands and to take him into our body and become like him. When did Jesus say these words in the gospel today? We heard them before. We heard them on Holy Thursday. But on Holy Thursday, you know, we're really in the middle of the sorrow and the sadness of what was going to happen to Jesus after the Last Supper and what was going to happen the next day. And we couldn't really celebrate with all the ways we should be, you know, but we can do that today. Today is the day to take the reality of this mystery, to embrace it fully in our hearts and to give ourselves totally to God and to one another as he gave himself totally to you and me. Like I said, he gave himself to us on the night before he gave himself for us. Now, if we're the body of Christ, the way we live this out is 
by receiving him into our hearts and then being like him to lay down our lives for one another as Jesus did for us. He said once, you are the light of the world. It's through Eucharist that you and I become that light. We're like a city on a mountaintop that can't be concealed. We are to show God's love to everyone we meet because he has loved us so much that he gave us himself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together as the body of Christ, we offer our prayers to God confident that we will be heard. For the church around the world, that we may continue to build up the body of Christ as we give witness to our faith in challenging times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our ears may be open to hear the cries of those wounded by racial discrimination and fill us with courage that we might seek to heal wounds build bridges, forgive and be forgiven, and establish peace and equality for all in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are sick and suffering, may they be comforted and experience God's healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot join us in celebrating the Eucharist, the hospitalized, and the homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those departed ones, Mary Ross, and especially Ismael Soto, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have passed over from the darkness of death into the glorious light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer in the silence of our hearts, as we call upon the name of the Lord in the presence of all God's people, may they be one with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints who feast forever with Jesus in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, your Son offered his body and blood to redeem us in our sinfulness and to nourish us as we continue his mission. May we be strengthened in this Holy Eucharist as we make these prayers to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. This we ask through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realms, realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, as we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the cup, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. I just want to remind you that when they bring you communion, they'll bring communion to you in your pews. They will walk down the empty pews. So we ask that you be seated. The reason we do that is because if you're kneeling, that sometimes gets in the way of the, the traffic. So be seated until they come to your pew, then stand up. If you are receiving communion, take off your mask and then extend your hand. My brothers and sisters, behold, 
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those at home who are not able to receive communion with us today, pray with me the spiritual act of spiritual communion. It was written for or by St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant our Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity and that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. You, Jesus, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, before I dismiss you, I want you to say, remember now, you wait until the usher says that you can go. We want to, don't want to get too close. We don't want to keep passing around that crazy bad virus, okay? So, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.